welcome back to Liz Sews and day two of the Esplanade Bra tutorial. Today we're going to start to put together the cup, so let's get started. Now the last steps we are going to do on this frame is we're actually going to put our bottom band elastic and our underarm elastic in now before we've even touched the cups. So I'm going to start with the bottom band elastic here. So it has a sort of plush side and then a side that looks a little bit rougher. So the plush side is what you're going to want against your body. So I'm looking at my bra with the right sides facing up. I'm going to align my elastic with the plush sides facing up and then I want the straight edge of my elastic to line against the straight edge of my bra. I'm going to sew this with a zigzag stitch as close as I can to the pico edge of the elastic. So that's the side that has all of the decorative edges. So a zigzag stitch as close as I can to the pico. Now I'm not going to put any tension on my elastic, which means I'm not going to be stretching it or anything like that. I want to apply it in a one-to-one -one nature all across the bottom of the band. Okay, so now that I have that elastic applied, and if we take a look up close, you can see we have that zigzag stitch as close as I can to the pico. Now if you have any of your fabric sort of peeking out beyond your elastics below because you were a little bit sloppy, that's fine. You can just go ahead and trim that up. Um, I don't have any, but I might... I'm going to trim down my seams right here just because it can get a little bit bulky. And this one, we're not using sheer fabric, so you're not going to be able to see it from the outside. But if you are using a sheer fabric, um, you want to make sure that you trim all of this to an equal length all the way across because you're going to be able to see that difference. But since it's not sheer, I'm just going to sort of grade down these seams that are a little bulky so that they don't cause issues later on. See, I'm not very clean about it, it's fine. So now we're gonna look at the bra from the inside and we're gonna wanna fold this elastic to the inside. So when you're looking at it from the outside of the bra, you should be able to see just little bits of that sawtooth design sticking out. So now I'm gonna sew this again with a zigzag stitch, but now I'm gonna do it as straight as close as I can to this straight edge of the elastic, continuing all the way along the bra. And this is what it looks like once you've finished sewing that along the inside. Now a quick little tip that I have for you. In my case, you can see that the back band is white and then the front part of my bra is this lovely seafoam color. So whatever thread you have in the bobbin of your machine is what's going to show up on the outside. So in my case, I sewed this back band and then I stopped here, picked up my needle, and then I started again over here and continued going with my white thread. Then I came back through again, changed out my bobbin to the seafoam thread so that I could do the center portion right here. I really think it's a small little detail that you can do that really makes the bra look nice to have the thread changing and matching as it moves across the bra. So now we're going to do the upper band elastic and it's gonna be done in the same way that the lower band was. So let's start, let's start on this side. And remember I said I have this giant roll of elastic and I'm just going to be working off of it so that none is wasted. So I'm gonna look at my elastic. I have, again, a plush side and then a less sort of nice side. I mean, they're both nice, but this one just doesn't look like it would feel as nice against your body. So I want my plush side which means I have the wrong edge. So let's get to the other side. Okay. So if I have the plush side of my elastic facing up, and then I went straight to straight edge on my bra, with my bra facing the right side up. And just like we did for the lower band elastic, we're gonna sew this on with a zigzag, zigzag stitch as close as we can to these pico edges. Okay, so now we have our upper band elastic sewn onto the outside. And just like we did for the bottom, we're gonna come around to the inside of the bra, pull this up, and now's the time to trim away any excess fabric if you have some peeking out. 
but fold this up and then you're gonna sew with a zigzag stitch as close to the straight edge as you can. I'm probably not going to switch out my thread for this one just because it's such a short distance and it's under the arm. I don't think anybody would see it. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use white all the way across for this. But you're gonna do that step on here as well as the other side of the bra. So you should have the upper edge finished. The only openings or raw edges you should have is where the cup goes and on the back band. Okay, so here's what it looks like once you get that upper edge finished. So now it's really starting to come together. So now we can set this aside and start working on our cups. So here we have our three cut pieces. This is going to be the, the smaller triangle is going to be the inner side, so the close the one closest to your sternum and this is going to be the outer cup and then of course we have this straight piece which is going to go along the top. So first I want to attach my inner to my outer cup. Now you should have some notches in your pattern right there and I do recommend you put your notches in on your fashion fabric because that's the easiest way to get them to line up. Um, some people recommend not to notch into your fabric just because it's such a small seam allowance you don't want to work to disrupt the integrity of it, but I personally have not had any issues. If you don't want to put a notch into your seam allowance, you could always just mark it with a bit of washable ink or friction pen, something like that, because we won't be ironing anything. So you don't have to worry about your friction pen disappearing. Okay, so we've gotten that pinned along that curve, and now I'm just gonna take this over to the machine with a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch. So once you've sewn it up, it should look something like this. And this should not be a surprise, so we're going to open it up, and then take this back over the machine and top stitch it. Um, let's see, I like to have my seam allowances pointing towards my underarm, so I like to keep them away from the front of the cup. So I'm going to push all of my seam allowances towards the larger triangle, and then I'm going to sew that on the machine with a scant eighth of an inch and a straight stitch. And here is what we have. We are starting to see some of that shaping already coming into f to shape, <laughs> into form. Um, I would recommend that you do one cup at a time. I find if I try to do both cups, I get confused about which one is which and then stuff gets turned around and moved and moved in different places like this. So I do recommend doing one cup at a time. Again, we can see this is our inner and our outer so they know that this is going to be the top of the cup. So the last part that we are going to do with this cup fashion fabric is of course pin on here. We do have a notch in the long straight piece and that notch should align with where that cross cup seam comes on your bottom cup. So I like to pin on that notch first. Then I'm going to pin my two edges. Remember that you should have a little bit of overhang triangle on there. Um, Cause what you really want to do is match up on the seam allowance, the quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you should have a little bit of, of dog ear triangle sticking out. And then I will pin the other side. Let's see. And then sort of meet in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna take this over the machine and sew this arc with a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch. And this is what it should look like once you've gotten that sewn. So just like everything else, we wanna flip this to the outside and then top stitch that down. Now if you're using a stretchy fabric like I am, I'm using a two-way stretch satin, you wanna make sure that when you're doing these curves like this that you're not stretching your fabric at all because you don't wanna build in any sort of like waviness. So try to make sure that you're not putting any tension on it if you're using a stretchy fabric. So you can sort of decide which way you think that the seam allowance should go. I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna push my seam allowance towards the bottom cup and leave the top cup uninterrupted. So just pushing all of your seam allowances to one side and then sewing with a scant eighth of an inch as close close to that seam line that you've already just done to tack everything down. 
And we can see here what it looks like once that is top stitched down and what it looks like from the inside. Now you see I do have a lot of exposed seam allowances. I'm not going to worry about that because we're going to use, like I said, that cut and sew foam or spacer foam in the bra. So all of this is going to be inside and you won't see it and it's not going to rub against your skin. So I just leave these open like this. There's no need to sort of encase them with a lining because the foam is going to act as our lining. So now that I've completed one cup, I'm going to go and do the other. And now we have two cups. So now I'm going to switch over to my cut and sew foam or spacer foam and I'll set these aside. Okay, so the first thing I did is I did change over the thread on my machine to white because these stitches will be visible from the inside of the bra. I just think it looks a little bit nicer to have my thread match my foam. So as you'll remember when I showed you the pattern pieces, these are essentially the same as our bra cut pieces, the only difference being that all the seam allowance has been taken away. So on these, I definitely have marked my notches, except this time I've done them with a pen because I don't have any seam allowance to work with. So what I want to do is set these under the machine. I like to match my notches up first and then go to the side that's closest to the notch. So I'm going to match up my notch first and then sort of like round these two together. And I'm going to take this over to the machine and I'm going to sew with a zigzag, just a standard zigzag stitch. If you are a little bit worried about it, you can go a little bit wider on your zigzag stitch, but I don't want, I don't like using a satin because I feel like that really shows more under clothing. And what do you want the needle to do is is take a bite on this side and 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 this side back and forth and you're going to move the cups underneath your presser foot like this so that the two edges are always butted up all the way along and you will start to see the cup sort of like form its shape as it goes under it will start curving up behind your presser foot so be aware of that okay so i've matched my nart my mark and i curve around to my closest edge and it's okay if they don't line up exactly as long as my marks match, drop my presser foot, make sure I put it in the zigzag stitch and then we can get going. And this is what that should look like and it should start forming that cup shape. And if you give it a little tug, ah, you can see I've not done a very good job here. I can actually see some air coming through there so I need to go back and stitch that again. It's okay, it's not the end of the world. Okay, now let's do it again. We got a little tug and we should see no air coming through. Okay, now I'm just gonna leave my marks in there. Uh, I have used friction pens, so if I wanted to, I could do a light iron to sort of get those out. But I just wanna make sure that when I'm building my cup pieces, the sides that have the the marks are going to be to the inside of the bra that way what's showing against your skin is a nice pristine clean fabric and that's going to be inside where all the seam allowances and dirty stuff is. we're going to repeat the same procedure with that top cut piece again remember we do have a mark in there and that mark should line up with that cross cut seam so i line up where my mark should be and then i just walk it with my fingers to the edge I'm not going to hate myself too much if the edge doesn't line up perfectly because I can always trim that to match true up later. And just like we did for the cup piece, we're looking at a zigzag stitch that takes a bite of each piece of the fabric every time. And just like we did on the other side, we want to stretch it to make sure there's no light showing through. Now you can see here I got a little wobbly and that's because I stretched my piece as I got to that section. So I'm probably going to unpick that and sew it again just because I don't love that wobbly seam look. Okay, so I've gone and re-sewn that in. It's a pain to have to do it, but I just think it's worth it because that's something that you'll definitely see from the outside of the bra. So you can see now it's a much smoother curve, not nearly as, as ripply over here. So I will say that this uh, spacer foam is a lot more difficult for me to work with than the regular beefier cut and sew foam. So that is one thing to keep in mind if you want to use that spacer foam is that it's a little bit finickier just because it's the nature of it being a lighter weight fabric. So now I've got one cup completed. I'm going to do the second foam cup in the same exact manner. Okay, so we have our two finished foam cup pieces. 
Now you can see that we have the sights with the notches facing up right now. That's because I want to make sure that what I see from the inside of the bra is a nice clean cup. And then what's going to of course happen is that we cover the foam with our fabric pieces. Now you will notice that the upper edge or the upper cup of our fabric piece does have this little extra jaunt in it and the reason that it's in there is to help finish the top edge of this without any additional elastics which I think is really really nice. So what I like to do at this point is just play around to figure out you know which cup goes with which foam piece right and I want to make sure this is looks good on the inside okay and then what I'm going to do is take it like that and then butt them together with the good side of my foam matching the good side of my fabric. And we're gonna line this up along the top. And again, you should have that little dog-eared corner and pin this into place. So like so. So like we should have the sort of notched bad side, ugly side of the foam, and then the seam allowance side of the fabrics facing up right now. And you do want to make sure that you have the correct foam to the right cups, all right? So it has the small triangle and then the large triangle matching up. So we're just going to take this over to the machine and sew it a quarter of an inch with a straight stitch. So once you've sewn that on with a straight stitch, it should look something like this. Then all we need to do is flip our fabric around to the outside. And I like to match up all of my different seam points. So put a pin here. And I will put a pin here. And right here. So if you've done this correctly, what you should see is that you will have a little bit, like a, a quarter of an inch of your fashion fabric showing from the inside, and then it folds all the way around. So on the outside, you get a nice clean edge. So I'm going to finish pinning in between my seams now. I particularly like using stretchy fabrics with foam because it can sort of be pulled taut over things. You can also pull it extra amounts and then you can snip off the excess if you want a really nice clean curve. Okay, so we have everything pinned down and this is what it's gonna look like from the inside. So I'm just gonna take this over and baste it on my machine. I'm, I know I'm gonna sew my cup in with a quarter of an inch, so I wanna make sure that my basting stitches stay within the seam allowance. And I'm just gonna use the longest stitch on my machine on a straight stitch. Okay, so now that I've basted that together, we have what looks like our finished cup here. And that's what it looks like on the inside. So I've gone ahead and repeated that for the other cup. And now we can add both of these into our cradle. That concludes day two of this bra tutorial. Come back tomorrow and we'll finish everything up.